So let's start there. What is happening in our schools? It has been one headline after the next. This one recently, a Florida private school principal, formerly nominated as Teacher of the Year, out of a job and facing a felony case after allegedly engaging in sexual conduct with a student. It's alleged that 43-year-old Tracy Smith stepped in to help a student, and the relationship escalated drastically from there. And last week, at least six female teachers were arrested in a span of two days. Two days for having sex with male students. One of them being 38-year-old Ellen Shell, the Kentucky teacher's charged with third-degree rape and accused of having sex on three occasions with two 16-year-old boys. No doubt the media is fascinated by this stuff, in part because many people view these female teachers differently than male. Even though anytime I even suggest that, I get destroyed on social media. So let's talk to our, our panel. Uh, joining me now are Katie Cherkasky, criminal defense attorney and political analyst. John Fugelsang, comedian and the host of Tell Me Everything, weekdays on Sirius XM's Progress Channel. And Juliet Huddy, former Fox News anchor and host. Good to see all of you. Appreciate it. Us. All right, so I don't know. Is it, is it an epidemic of female teachers having sex with male students? Is it a media obsession? Is it unfair to ask? Is it different? All these, maybe it's not that important, but interesting oh, kind questions. Oh, important. Right? I mean. It's interesting. I mean, Mary Kay Letourneau was around for decades at this point, so this isn't like the first time this has ever happened. But I have to wonder, you know, all these schools talking about sex all the time, I don't know, maybe there's something to that. Some sort of, you know, logical leap. John? <laughs> <laughs> when you say schools talking about sex all the time, you mean the kids, right? Because that's all that was discussed among kids in my junior high and high school. So, uh... I don't know how it is these days. But yeah, and, and in fact, though, I think you're right. It is different for female teachers because even as a criminal defense attorney, I was a former prosecutor too, these women are not going to get anywhere near the same sort of sentences as a man in the same scenario. I mean, that's but kind of the bottom line. But you even say that, and in particular... Uh, and, and it does end well, up being gender oriented. There are a lot of men who will say, "Oh, well, you know, that was all. wrong." And, but and there mean, are women who are like, "How dare you? What? How dare you distinguish between men and women when it comes to teaching?" Well, first of all, I think that it's kind of a good thing that we are hearing about this so often. Don't get me wrong. The point is that. I think these kids nowadays, because of social media, and just because of the way the culture is, the way our society is now, they're maturing so fast. I mean, mm -hmm. you guys have kids. Uh, I don't, but I, I'm watching some of my friends' kids, and these kids, I mean, they, they know what Louis Vuitton is when they're five years old. I mean, they're just exposed to so much more now, and I think they're probably talking a lot more about this stuff, which is why this stuff is starting to be uh, publicized. And, and what's interesting, John, is some of the boys are the ones making the advances at the teachers, <laughs> and, and that ends up being one of their defenses. Well, let's get ugly about this then, Dan. If you, want, if you want to get hot and buzzy, let's do it. Yeah. Um, because uh, when I was in junior high school, of yeah. course I would have. I would have yeah. done anything. I had certain teachers that it would have been hitting the lotto for me. Yeah. And it still would have been rape for those teachers if they had crossed that line. The worst part about this is all the obnoxious males with the nice memes all over social media thinking this is somehow not our word. Um, I, I do find it comforting that it's not a testosterone situation. Like, I'm so used to men being the creepy predators. Having feminism predation almost feels like a bit of progress. And like, <laughs> wow, estrogen can be as toxic as yeah, testosterone. Yeah. Who knew? <laughs> but, Did um, you know anybody when you guys were growing up? Um, when you were in school that w was having any sort of like no, but little thing. I yeah. had two people. I did. Really? I did. Not like, did? But I knew, a, I knew a female student with a male teacher, yes. Yeah, I knew two female students with, well, with different male teachers. But I the mean, fact is... This, didn't, what ages are you we talking didn't, about? I'm talking about high school. So we, but we, yeah. we were so innocent. We just kind of thought, oh, you know, I, it just, <laughs> it wasn't something that we really understood, I think, at the right. time. But that was the olden days. But I'm in old, the olden so days, it was criminal. still going on. Now we're sort saying, of in yeah. the age of micro-accountability, where yeah. right. the fact is, the scandal's not so much, oh, these six women were doing this. The story is, oh, these six women were caught doing right. this, right. and yes. it's going to make it harder. The greatest thing about Me Too, for me, is that it's never in the history of our species been harder for an adult to prey on a child or for a man to prey on a woman in the workplace because people come forward. And this will scare a lot of other professionals out of making the same horrible choice. This next topic on school is a little more political. Public schools in Democratic-run New York are gearing up to ban calling themselves the Warriors, the Chiefs, the Braves, part of a national effort to scrub controversial wording from sports teams. Washington Redskins, now called the Washington Commanders. Nearly 
60 school districts will be required to get rid of all use of indigenous-related mascots and imagery by the end of the 24-25 school year or risk losing state aid. Katie, what do you make of it? Well, I personally don't think that's a bad thing. This has been a long burn in terms of, like, the indigenous references. That's been a, a conversation that's been around for quite a while. So I think, you know, to the extent that now many people support that, I know that there's history and tradition and there's a lot of feelings involved with that. But I, I agree. I and think the argument always is on. we're celebrating, right? Right. Is that it's we, are, we are treating... Uh, the reason we want to call it Indians or Braves or whatever is to say how amazing. Uh, they are. Oh, yeah. That was what Redskins was all about. Yep. Uh, <laughs> epithet about their skin color yeah. run by the most racist franchise that JFK had to force to desegregate, and they kept defending Redskins for years. Right. But let's let's move away from Redskins. Redskins is too easy to some degree. The, the harder ones are the ones... Warriors. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean... Well, now, Warriors, right, you might have a, a point. Strange. Yeah, it yeah. seems like maybe my inclination is to say, oh, Warriors, that's not indigenous-specific, but no. the I fact depending is... Depending on the mascots and things like that. Yeah, well, I remember the, watching Braves games and seeing their mascot chief Nakahoma when I was a kid and being <laughs> grossed out by it, and all my friends thought I was too sensitive. But the fact is, these schools most likely don't have a lot of indigenous faculty. You know, if they want to honor indigenous people, you can hire some. They're out there. They're looking for jobs. And again, this is just using First Nations people as a cartoon figure, as a symbol, rather than talking about the struggles they have in their life right now. Warriors, yeah, I would probably agree. That seems a bit extreme, but I'm not indigenous. But, but, not right, that's, but, that's but, actually but, the but point. But do they get to decide? I mean, meaning like, so if you no, get... they're powerless. This right. is white people no. deciding to do the right, right thing. Right, but now let's say you have, you know, a, I know a guy who's in a club, right? He's in a club, has some some indigenous name, and they've gotten the local tribe to say they're okay with it. Okay. I mean, you know, does that make it okay? Well, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's right, the like problem. Right, setting the standards. Right. I think that you're right. In some ways, it could be like, well, we think that it's a, it's a nice icon to look up to. It's a nice sort of... Uh, you know, gesture to use that symbolism. I think so, the fact is, if it if it's hurting know. people, we you know something has happened over the last decade where we're a country where being compassionate, being considerate, uh, is a bad thing, or somehow it like ooh, you're a snowflake and you're a boogeyman, and it's, it, it's but, okay to be compassionate. But it is all, but it's also but it okay. can get a little overboard. Right, right. But that's the right. point. It's also okay. Yeah. Like, I'm all, all about being a warrior. Right, but it, it's okay to say hey, you know, historically, this has been what the team has been called for mm -hmm. X number of years, and it's not the Redskins, which is a, an overt kind of easy one. Sure. Um, you know, makes it a little trickier. Meanwhile, in Republican-led states, the Florida Board of Education banning teaching gender identity and sexuality through all grades in kindergarten through 12 in public schools extends the existing ban. And for teachers who violate it, they could see their teaching licenses suspended or revoked. Florida already targeting books that feature LGBTQ characters. Book bans have reached the highest level yet in the United States, according to nonprofit PEN America. Nearly 1,500 instances of individual books were banned during the first half of the school year. You know, what's interesting uh. is I'm, I'm more bothered by the book banning yeah. than I am the silliness over the... Who can teach what, et cetera, in the schools, et cetera? Oh, you can be outraged over both, Dan. Well, yeah, you can, but you know what? But again, the, the sort of the definitions uh, with regard to what teachers can teach, yes, Florida's gone well, too well, far. I mean, what's insidious mm -hmm. about don't say gay, uh, thank you for Ron DeSantis, the boy who cried woke, is that it allows anyone to sue any teacher or any faculty member for saying anything about gender identity or sexual orientation. Although I'm sure if you talk about heterosexuals, there'll be no problem. So it's essentially like these Texas bounty laws. Anyone can sue any school district, and who picks up the tab for that? The taxpayers. The problem with it is the same problem as the book ban. It's performative cruelty. It doesn't help anyone. It doesn't improve the schools. It does not improve the lives of a single person in Florida. It's someone who wants to run for president, Pretend auditioning very well, well, I don't necessarily agree with that. I mean, you're talking about just pure politics here. People yes. live in a state. They send their kids to public school. They pay taxes. They're entitled to do that. Yeah. And parents don't want their kids learning about certain topics and that's learning that gay people well. exist and trans well, people they, exist and they they mean, like, let's be honest, they, pretend like they, they don't exist and then we'll be, all be okay but they just are gonna be great kids, i'm like you're at school i don't even know when you have time to talk about these other things like do your reading do your math you could do a lot more of that i really don't know that that is the job of the school whether or not that's morally something that it should be imposed on people. You these know what? They're, people they're, that are voting for the governor, they're voting for the people on the school board, sure. and they're sending their kids to these schools, and that's 
the bottom line in my mind. Gay and kids are old enough to be that. gay kids are old enough to be victims of homophobia. Mm -hmm. That means straight kids are old enough to learn that homophobia is bad. A year ago, they said. This but is, is that the, the job children. of the public school? Is the question? Well, but a, well, yeah, because we have equal protection under the law. A year ago, they were saying, "Oh, it's only well, kindergarten <laughs> through third grade. Only kindergarten through third grade." We pointed out at the time the language of the law showed, "No, you can extend this through high school." It was never just about the kids. You can be in Florida. You can be 18 years old, old enough to fight and die for the country, but not old enough to have a teacher explain to you how Anthony Kennedy wrote the majority opinion why, for marriage equality again, in 2015. But that still begs the question of why parents have to agree to that when they have minor children. They don't have to send their kids to a public school. What problem does this solve? Tax funded. What problem does this what, solve? Well, people have certain preferences about what they want their kids educated about, and you can make moral sure, every parent. Like when you're, and when say that that's wrong, and they need to learn this, and they have to learn that. But it's actually so kids are old enough to experience homophobia, but not old enough to learn about. Well, also kids need to understand well, that they're going to be going over to their friends' houses, and the friends have two daddies, or my, you know, my friends have two mommies, and these kids, you know, they're well, ostracized. That's what I do wonder about. about kids, need, like, like, parents, parents, parents aren't her. teaching their kids how to behave. But, but Katie's question is, why does that have to be taught at public schools? Right. I mean, she's she's not saying. And does anyone have to know that, right? Sure. The I question mean, is, have, what's a parent's have, obligation for what's versus what's a school? Sure, obligation? but again, what is being taught? If a kid asks a question and right. a teacher right. answers it honestly, well, another kid in the right. room's parents so, can so, sue so, that teacher. So, so right. So, so this is overboard, right? I mean, the, the problem is the banning, right? It, it's the you could say, look, we don't want blank in the curriculum. That's different from saying, if you do ever touch this, you're in big trouble. It's, there, it's it's not the it's same. It's a mediocre politician doing performative cruelty to audition for He's president. He's been a pretty successful politician, right? right. Well, but yeah, I'm saying yeah, morally, yeah, yeah. morally, yeah. Of it. okay, all right. Morally, but, but you said mediocre. He's <laughs> actually doing one by twenty points in Florida. So yeah, he's, he's not beaten by twenty points by a reality TV landlord as well. Let's but again, see. It's let's about see. The well, we're going to get. Dan, it's no different than the migrants on the plane. It's all about the cruelty. It's all about because they but believe a certain a, section of America the, responds look, look. to meanness. But he, here's the thing: he's not doing it to be cruel. You may think it is cruel. His goal is not to be cruel. Then his goal is political. His, yes. below, his goal is political advantage. Absolutely. It's not, his goal is not to achieve cruelty. I said performative cruelty. He's doing uh, it to show off. Look how okay. mean I am to Perform these trans okay. kids. Look how mean I am to the migrants. Well, Vote so how me. is that not cruel? I'm Trump with the brain. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.